Welcome back to Blau Dev. Today we're going to be talking about Firebase and how to hook up um, Firebase authentication into your app. So where we left off last time is we created these login and signup screens, but currently they don't do anything. And so today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be going through and showing you guys how to set up the project on Firebase itself, how to set up your Flutter application to utilize Firebase and connect to it, and how to set up our login and register buttons to create a user or check and validate that a user's credentials are valid um, before we route them into the application. So to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Firebase. Uh, if you haven't been there before, go to firebase.google.com. It should route you here. And you're gonna select the account that you wanna be using this on. Um, it should just be your default Google account. Um, if you have a project already, if you've worked with this in the past, you feel free to skip ahead. Um, otherwise, we're going to create a new project. And I'm going to call this one just BlyleDev. I accept the terms. We're going to enable analytics, that's fine. And then create my project. Once your project is finished being built, we're going to click continue and then we're going to click on develop. And so what we're first gonna do is we're gonna to have to set up our application for both iOS and Android and setting up to handle both of those. But to start, I always forget to do this and so I like to do this first thing. Um, I just want to enable um, email and password authentication. You can also authenticate users using Google and any other of these methods, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, however you want to do it. But for our purposes, we're going to do an email and password. If you want to see a tutorial on how to do any other ones, um, there's a lot of great resources. All you need to do is just Google it, Flutter, Firebase authentication with Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So we're going to go back to our project overview and we're going to add an app. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with iOS to begin with. And it's asking us for an iOS bundle ID. To find your bundle identifier, you're gonna go into Xcode and we're gonna click on runner and look under the general tab. And you'll see right here, it should have generated a bundle identifier already for you. If this isn't there, then simply start it with com dot and then you can call it whatever you'd like. This is gonna be the identifier that we're gonna have uh, Firebase recognize our app with, as well as if we were to publish this in a future date, the App Store will also recognize the app by this bundle identifier. Give it a nickname. I'll call this Opening Screen Demo. Although actually, I'm gonna call this Blile Dev Demo. App Store ID, don't care for that. Click Continue. And this is important. You wanna make sure you download your Google service info P list. Click next, we can skip this, we can skip this, and it's gonna run. And so actually I'm gonna just skip this step for now. I don't, I don't care too much about that. Going back into Xcode, I'm going to place my new Google plist in the same runner folder that we find our info.plist. Okay. Now that that's done, that should be everything we need to do for the iOS side to connect to Firebase. Next up, we're gonna add an Android project to Firebase, and it's gonna look for an Android package name. Ideally, this is typically the same as your iOS bundle identifier. However, it's safe to be um, sure that that's what we're looking for. You're going to go into your Android folder, app, build.gradle, and you should see if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see application ID underneath default config. We're going to just copy that, paste that in here, and we'll say file dev demo Android register. We're gonna download the config, and you'll note here they tell you exactly where you need to put it. So we need to put it in the same folder that our build.gradle is under app. So download that. 
We're going to move over really quickly over here. We're going to add it to app. OK, add, that's in. We're going to click Next. And this is actually we do have to do. We can't skip over this. So this is on the project, build.gradle. You see it's asks us under the build script, dependencies, and right here, this class path. I'm going to copy that. We go build script, dependencies, add that line in. And then under all projects, repositories, we just want to make sure that Google's there. And typically it is with Flutter. So that one's OK. Next up, we want to go to the app level build.gradle. So we have Android app build.gradle. Close out of that one. And it asks us to add in the following line com.google.gms.google services. And this is right next to the other apply plugins. And then lastly, implementation under dependencies. Okay, save that. We can close out of that. And we are good to go. I'm going to skip this step. And you see here, now we have our two apps set up to connect to Firebase. Last thing we need to do is we need to add under our dependencies, um, our Firebase dependency. And this can be found at pub.dev. It's the Firebase underscore auth package. And you're going to go to installing, you're going to copy the most recent version, and click pub.get or you can run flutter pub get. Okay. And then we're going to take the import and we're going to add it to both our login screen. And I'm going to put some separation between the files and the packages and the register screen. Okay. And I'm going to kill that app actually, cause we don't need it open right now. Alrighty. And that's done. So now we've successfully set up both Firebase and our app to be able to uh, call Firebase functions and create and log in users. Okay, now that we have our project set up to connect to Firebase and communicate with it, we can now establish our methods for signing a user up and signing a user in. So what we're going to do is in our register button, and this is under register screen, um, and you'll see here it's whatever it's the action that happens when you click this register button. We're going to go here and we're going to say try catch e print e that'll do. And in our try statement, uh, what we're going to do, and I should uh, stress as well, in this on press method, we want to make sure it's asynchronous. And the reason why is because we're going to say Firebase user user equals await. Firebase off .instance .create user with email and password. For the email, we use our email controller.txt. And for our password, we use our password controller.txt. Okay. Reformat that. Put a trailing comma here. And the last thing is it's going to want us to cast this. Okay. Perfect. Alrighty. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say if user is not equal to null. OK, if we get to this point and it enters, then what that means is that the user has successfully been created. There's been no issues, no duplicates from the email, no passwords that aren't valid, none of that. If we've reached this point, that means we've successfully created the user. If it didn't successfully create, it probably it would have thrown an exception and it would have been caught in our catch statement. And what we'll do here at a later date, and I'll probably show this in the next video, is we'll do a um, alert dialogue with error. And then we'll also want to say uh, username controller dot text, uh, password controller dot text, 
three password controller dot text and lastly email controller dot text and set all of those to an empty string and the reason we want to do this is if they had an error signing up something was wrong in what they entered so we just want to reset it all and clear out the screen to a clean slate our next step is handling the user response and we want to update the user's information to include their username and set it to the display name. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna say user update info. And I should reiterate, if the user is not equal to null, this means that we've successfully created the user and they've now been signed in to that account. Okay, going back to this. User update info, uh, update user. And we're gonna say that is equal to user update, I gotta have a capital U there, user update info. Okay, and what this is, this is an object that holds all the information pertaining to a Firebase user. So we're gonna establish a new update user info um, object, and then we're gonna add in a new display name for that object, and then we're going to update the Firebase user with this update user update info object. So what we're next gonna say is we're gonna say update user dot display name is equal to underscore username controller dot text. Okay. Then we're gonna to wanna to update our user. So we're gonna say user dot update profile and pass it our update user. So what this is all done, this little code here, is it's taken a new update user object, we've modified the display name to include this new username, and then we pushed it to that user's account. Okay? And this is gonna be useful because later in the app, we can utilize this username on the profile page and, and such. Um, it's just another way to identify the user. The last thing we wanna do on this register screen is we wanna navigate the user into the app should they be successful in signing up, logging in, and updating their user information. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use navigator.of context dot push named. And for the parameters, we're gonna say app routes dot menu. And if you don't remember what this is, we have a routes um, class in our theme folder. Um, and we created this last time and we have a menu uh, navigation that takes you to our menu screen. And what the menu screen is, is this is just a basic screen where eventually we're going to hold our tab bar at the bottom that we're gonna incorporate. So going back to our register screen, um, after we've successfully signed up, we're gonna navigate. We're next gonna go to our login screen and do something similar uh, with this screen but we're gonna log a user in instead of signing them up. So we need to first find where our login button is called. It looks like it's right here, login button. This on press method here. Uh, we wanna make sure it's asynchronous. And then we're gonna say Firebase, actually before we do Firebase, we're gonna say try, catch, Print e. Let's say email controller dot text equals that. Password controller dot text equals that. Okay. And next in our try, we're going to say Firebase user user equals Firebase auth dot instance dot sign in with email and password. We're going to pass our email controller and our password controller. And it's gonna want us to cast it. Okay, just gonna add a trailing comma here and format it a little bit better. And if you're not familiar with how to format, um, I'm, not specific, I'm not positive on how to do it with Visual Studio, but with Android Studio, it's Option Command L if you're a Mac user. If you're a Windows user, I believe it's Alt Windows L. I could be wrong, that could be Alt Control L. 
Um, but that's how you auto format and Dart Formatter will go through and reformat your code accordingly. That's a really helpful, really helpful feature. Okay, next we're gonna say if user's not equal to null, this means that we have successfully logged in. Otherwise it should throw an error which will be caught. And eventually in the future, um, in our next video, we'll show you an alert dialog with error. And we'll go over dialogs. We'll create a forgot password dialog. So when you push that button, a little modal will pop up where a user can enter an email and it'll send a verification email to them to reset their password. And we'll do an alert dialog for when a user has incorrectly signed up or signed in. And then the last thing to do here is navigate. Navigate for dot, dot push named app routes dot menu. And that's it. Before we do the final demo to see if everything's working, uh, there are two small changes that we need to make. And this is due to the new version of the Firebase package. You can no longer cast as Firebase users anymore. Um, this will return an auth result, which is not the same as a Firebase user. So the way to get around this is in register, we need to say dot user instead of our cast. And in login screen, we need to do two things. One, I forgot to add a wait. And two, instead of doing a cast, we're actually going to say dot user as well. Once that's done, let's rebuild, go to register. Let's go through it. Wild dev for username, wild dev at gmail.com for the email. I'm just gonna do one to six for the password, really simple. And there we go, we're in. Uh, the home screen currently has nothing. You can see it has just a small text and that's in the top left corner, but that's it. If we rebuild this guy now, let's see if we can log in with the same user. Dialdev at gmail.com, one to six. And there we go, we're in. Now let's just make sure that this is all working. And let's do an email that's not valid. And this is the error that we got. We got a platform exception, user not found. Uh, this user may have been deleted, there's no record. And so this is the message that we're gonna be displaying in the next video. It's showing you how to do those alerts and display these messages. When you sign up users, um, you can manage all of them from your Firebase console. If you're stuck here, this is your main screen. If you go to authentication, you'll see a list of all registered users here. You can manually uh, reset the password, disable the account, delete the account, um, and see some information such as when they were created, the last time they were signed in, what their UID is, what their identifier is. The only thing you can't see is their password, and rightfully so. Um, so that's how you use and set up Firebase authentication in Flutter. Um, there's a lot of even more verbose and better ways to set up authentication um, with uh, setting up a service, and managing the auth state and automatically pushing a user into the app should they already have been logged in. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna keep it at this, just showing you basic, uh, using an email and password, basic registration, basic login. Um, one thing I'll probably do off camera is add in another little um, bit of logic to ensure that the passwords match that the user has entered two passwords that match each other just to be sure that um, it's definitely the password they want but outside of that that's a wrap for this video i'll catch you guys next time if you like this video find it useful click that like button subscribe um, your support's been great and i'll catch you guys next time